Let's turn in our Bibles. Hallelujah. Let's go to uh, John chapter 12, shall we? John chapter 12 and verse 12. Let's read the word of the Lord together today. The next day, the great crowd that had come to the feast heard that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. They took palm branches and went out to him, shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the King of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it as it is written, Do not be afraid, O daughter of Zion. See, your king is coming seated on a donkey's colt. Verse 16. At first his disciples did not understand all this. Only after Jesus was glorified did they realize that all these things had been written about him and that they had done these things to him. Now the crowd that was with him, when he called Lazarus from the tomb and raised him from the dead, continued to spread the word. Many people, because they had heard that he had given this miraculous sign, went out to meet him. So the Pharisees said to one another, See, this is getting us nowhere. Look how the whole world has gone after him. Father, thank you for your word today. Speak to our hearts. I pray in Jesus' name, and everyone would say, Amen. Amen. Now, before you're seated, hug a neighbor and say, I'll see you tonight in the park. <laughs> hug someone and say, I'll see you tonight in the park. <laughs> Friday night, it'll be a wonderful night here at Harvest Church as well. It's going to be our Good Friday service. We'll be celebrating communion together this Friday night at 7 o'clock. Now, I want you to imagine yourself in Jerusalem over 2,000 years ago. There was a great crowd there that day that had come to celebrate the feast of the Passover. Now, Passover was for the Jewish and still is, still is the Super Bowl of all Passovers, all right? It's the final four of all Passovers, whether you're Kentucky or Kansas, I don't know. It was a great celebration. It's known that 256,000 lambs, 256,000 lambs were slain in one Passover, and each lamb represented at least 10 worshipers. So in Jerusalem, on that day, Palm Sunday, <laughs> there was at least 2,560,000 people that had flooded into this small town to observe the Passover. Probably looked something like you see on New Year's Eve on Times Square. The amount of people and the necessary housing and food arrangements to handle such a mass can hardly be imagined. I mean, you talk about the granddaddy of all barbecues. But as they prepared to observe one of the most important Jewish feasts of the year, word came that Jesus was on his way to the city. It is a rare thing that in all four Gospels, the Synoptic Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, that you see a story or an event recorded in all four. Often you'll have two events recorded in one of the Gospels like Matthew and John. Sometimes you'll have three, but rarely do you see all four events recorded in the Synoptic Gospels. For that reason alone, we should consider what happened here on Palm Sunday very important. The crowd gathers as Jesus rides into the city on the colt of a donkey. And they begin to wave palm branches and they shout, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. So we see Jesus was truly there on that day. But who were the others in the crowd? If you were there, who would you have come to see? And what would you be thinking? I believe that as we examine the people that were present on that particular day, we may find ourselves and some some others around us in the crowd. I've entitled this message this morning, The Faces of Palm Sunday. First, we see the Roman soldiers. Yes, they were there. As the crowd began 
ready to honor Jesus, I'm sure, it gets the attention of the Roman soldiers. There were probably a large number of soldiers gathered to see what's going on. For they were in charge of keeping the crowd. They were the crowd control. What did this demonstration mean to the Romans? Well, nothing is recorded about this from the Roman viewpoint. But it's certain that they kept a close eye on that day because of the annual Passover. It was not uncommon that some Jewish zealots would try to arouse the people to fight back against the Roman occupation. <laughs> Just like some of the things that we have happening today in our world, like Occupy Wall Street. Maybe they thought this parade was that kind of event. But then here comes Jesus riding on a colt of a donkey. I imagine that some of the Roman soldiers must have smiled and laughed at the triumphal entry because it was nothing like their own triumphal celebrations that took place back in Rome. You see, whenever a Roman general was victorious on a foreign soil, killing at least 5,000 of the enemy and gaining new territory for Caesar, he was given a Roman triumphal celebration when he returned to the city. It was the Roman equivalent of an American ticker tape parade, only with much more splendor, pomp, and circumstance. The general would ride into the city on a gold-covered chariot with white stallions pulling it, a symbol of a warrior victory in battle. The general would display his trophies, that he had won, the enemy leaders he had captured would be paraded in chains down the streets behind the general and the parade usually ended in the arena where some of the captains entertained the people by fighting wild animals. Yes, I'm sure some of these soldiers probably laughed at the antics of the Jerusalem crowd that day at the sight of this so-called king. <laughs> What real king would ride down the streets on a dumb donkey? What powerful leader would stoop so low? Comparing to a Roman triumph, our Lord's entry into Jerusalem was nothing. I think it's interesting because it's exactly how people treat Jesus today. Oh, they're amused by the stories about him. They laugh at him and the people who worship him. After all, what educated person would believe some of the things that they said Jesus did? Could Jesus really make blind eyes see to make the lame to walk, to deaf to hear? To walk on water? Come on! Unless you know where the rocks are, how can somebody walk on water? Who in their right mind would believe such things. So they just laugh at Christians who have faith in the Jesus of Nazareth. The Roman soldiers represented those who view Jesus as a laughing matter. But can I tell you, friend, Jesus is no laughing matter. He will not be mocked by the philosophies of the people of this world. Oh yes, the world may mock him and laugh at him today, but when he breaks through that eastern sky, the laughing and the mocking will stop. Amen. Every eye will see him, every knee will bow before him, and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord of Lords and King of Kings. Who saw Jesus on Paul Sunday? What were the faces of Palm Sunday? Well, first you have the Roman soldiers. But you also have large crowds. <clears throat> Go with me to John 12, 9. John 12, 9 says, Meanwhile, a large crowd of Jews found out that Jesus was there and came not only because of him, but also to see Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. Before Jesus had come to Jerusalem, he spent some time with Mary and Martha and Lazarus and Bethany. And we see another large crowd there. But John says they're not there to see Jesus, necessarily. But they're there to see this man, Lazarus, as the story goes, who had been raised from the dead. These people were there to see the show, not to see the Master. 
These people are the half sincere seekers. Anytime they saw a crowd, they were thinking, free lunch. <laughs> Isn't that how some people see church today? To see a show and join the party? They don't come to worship the king, but they come to see what people are wearing. They come to socialize, or maybe if they're lucky, they'll get in on some of the good stuff. And look out if there's food involved. Oh my goodness, don't get in the way of the food mongers. Some of you scare me in a food line. <laughs> Unfortunately, these people are only there to get what they can, not to worship the king. They're part of the crowd to see the miracles, but not to be in relationship with the one who does the miracles. John 12, 18 says, Many people, because they had seen and heard that he had given this miraculous sign, went out to meet him and see him. It's sad, but I think in some ways, this is what church life has become in our culture. They come for the exciting atmosphere, the giveaways, the food. But if any of that is missing from the service, then they just don't show up. We become such consumers of the event instead of being consumers of the living God. Let me ask you some tough questions today. How many sitting in the presence of the Lord in His church are only half sincere? How many come to church just because it's the thing to do on Sunday, the place to be, the place where everyone else is? John 6.30 says, So they asked Him, What miraculous sign then will you give that we may see it and believe it? What will you do? That's the attitude of the world. What's in it for me, Jesus? Mark 7.6 says, he replied, Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you hypocrites, and it is written, These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Then in Matthew 23, 28, it says in the same way, On the outside they appear as people, as righteous, but on the inside they're full of hypocrisy and wickedness. How many want the miracles, but miss the Master? I know beyond a shadow of a doubt. There were many in the crowd that day when Jesus rode into Jerusalem on the donkey. They were shouting, Hosanna! Hosanna! Oh, blessed is he who comes in the Lord one minute. And the next minute, they were shouting, Crucify! Crucify! Crucify him! Nice. <laughs> Just part of the crowd. So who saw Jesus on Palm Sunday? Who were the faces? One, the Roman soldiers, the mockers and the scoffers. Two, the large crowds. They were the party animals. But there was another group there that day, the religious leaders. John 12, 19 says, So the Pharisees said to one another, See, this is getting us nowhere. Look how the whole world has gone after him. You know, whenever there was power and prestige, you'd always find the Pharisees. They wanted the praise. They wanted the glory. They wanted to be looked up to. They wanted to be the ones who had all the influence. They were the power brokers of the day. But oh, look out if someone else received the praise. People were beginning to come after Jesus. And the Pharisees knew that this meant that their powerful political positions were in jeopardy. How tragic it is that religious positions sometimes become political. I think of the most honorable Reverend Jesse Jackson. <laughs> How tragic it is that men reject Christ for the influences of this world. How tragic it is that people swap eternity for social and political gain. These preachers and teachers, these church leaders, were only interested in themselves. They were only interested in the prestige of their positions. 
And they were going to oppose anyone and anything that threatened their power. God isn't pleased with that kind of leadership. He says in Ezekiel 34, Son of man, prophesy against these shepherds of Israel. Prophesy and say to them, This is what the Sovereign Lord says, Woe to the shepherds of Israel who only take care of themselves. Should not shepherds take care of the flock? You eat the curds, clothe yourself with wool, and slaughter the choice animals, but you do not take care of the flock. There are many in the church life today who want only the visible positions. They want the power. They want to be the movers and the shakers. And to gain a following, they'll say anything that is popular to gain a crowd. They'll preach even an unbalanced gospel. Oh, come to Jesus with all your cares and all your troubles will be over. Come to Jesus and He'll give you everything that you want. They'll say anything to gain a following. They'll preach what the crowd wants to hear, but not preach what the Word of God says. <laughs> Rather than pointing men and women to Jesus, they point men and women to themselves. They want people to follow them and not God. And Isaiah was right when he said, they are dogs with mighty appetites. They never have enough. They are shepherds who lack understanding. They all turn their own way and they seek their own gain. Yes, there were these bad shepherds in the crowd that day. They even went as far to plot to do away with Jesus. They said in their hearts, this is getting us nowhere. Look how the whole world has gone after him. Their only option was to do away with Jesus. And that's exactly what they did. Who killed Jesus? The Pharisees killed Jesus. A righteous man hung on a cross because he took away their popularity vote. So on Palm Sunday, we see in the crowd that day the faces of the Roman soldiers who were amused and laughed at Jesus. The large crowds who wanted to join the party and get something for nothing. Jesus was just another blue light special at Wally World. But you also have the religious leaders who wanted power and prestige. And oh yes, I almost forgot another face on Palm Sunday. You see, there was one more group that came to witness the triumphal entry. <laughs> In the Gospels, I've been stealing portions from each of the stories. There was one other group John describes, number four, those who wanted to see and experience Jesus. You see in John 12, 20, he describes them. Now there were some Greeks. You notice it didn't say there were some Jews. <laughs> there weren't any religious people. There were some Greeks, some outsiders, those who went up to the festival, the feast, and they came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida and Galilee, with a request. They said, Sir, we would like to see Jesus. <laughs> Thank God there's another group of people who wanted more than another spiritual goosebump or a free lunch or to be a part of the next political election. They said, We would see Jesus. Hallelujah. Palm Sunday, we would all say, let me see Jesus. Just let me see Jesus. I don't care about the fried chicken, the singing group, or the miraculous signs. I just want to see Jesus. Yes. That's who I want to see. Yes. <laughs> oh, that we would come into his presence to glorify and honor him. What a difference it would make in our lives if we would just say, Today, today, I've got to see Jesus. Nothing else matters. I've got to see Jesus. For when we see Jesus, and we worship His name, then God is glorified. When we recognize that this Jesus represents the love of God for us, and this love would send him to a cross and die for us. We can be changed and transformed by his grace and his mercy. When we come to the realization that God gave his only son to die for us, 
that we might not perish and have eternal life. It changes our perspective. When we see and believe this glorious truth, then we begin to worship Him. We begin to bow down and surrender our hearts to God. We begin to obey His will. His will to honor and praise Him for all that He's done for us. Yes, if we would only see Jesus, then the name of God would be glorified in our lives. And that's when real worship occurs in the church. Those people in the crowd that day, they were shouting something that was much more significant than they could ever imagine. They were saying, Hosanna. Hosanna is a Hebrew word that means he who saves. Hallelujah. <laughs> they might not have known it at the time, but they were welcoming the king in their hearts. But this was not a king who would reign over Israel. No, this king was far more important, far more powerful than any king on earth. For although they didn't realize it, they were honoring the king of the universe. They were honoring the king of kings. They were honoring the Lord of lords. They were honoring the king that would triumph over death and the grave. They were singing praises to the Lamb of God who would take away the sins of the whole world. Amen. Shouldn't we be doing the same today? I say yes. I say we take a hold of the palm branches today and we wave our praise to King Jesus. Yeah. He's the one that truly saves us. Amen. He's the one that lifts us out of the valley of despair. Amen. He's the one that sets our feet on the rock. Amen. Hallelujah. That's why Jesus said, if these don't praise me, <laughs> then the very rocks are going to start screaming out. Oh, I want to be one of the faces of Palm Sunday who sees Jesus for what He really is. And I want to lift my voice, my heart, my hands and give Him praise that is worthy His name. Amen. So we see the faces of Palm Sunday. First you see the Roman soldiers who were amused and laughed at Jesus. Friend, are you still laughing at Jesus? Is He just a mockery in your life? Is He just another day on your weekly calendar? You also see the large crowds who wanted to join the party and get something for nothing. Are you following God because it's the end thing? Or because you want to get in on the next big thing? Yes, the religious leaders who wanted power and prestige were those who wanted to see and experience Jesus. And now for the most important question of all, what face are you today on Palm Sunday? Are you the face of the Roman soldier? That Jesus stuff. Ha 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 ha. Yeah. <laughs> Are you a rubbernecker? Do you come to church for a great show and the freebies? Are you a pawnbroker? Well, I'll serve as long as there's something at the end for me. Are you part of the. I want to see Jesus. I want to see Jesus. You bow your heads with me. Palm Sunday will come and grow just like any other event on the calendar in the year. But without a relationship with Jesus, Palm Sunday means, means nothing in history. As your heads are bowed, you say, Pastor Rod, <laughs> it's time for me to see Jesus. My prayer this week has been some faces in the crowd <laughs> would see Jesus on this Sunday. No more Roman soldiers. No more mockers. No more rubberneckers. 
no more pawnbrokers, but those who are like the Gentiles, who said we've come today on this Palm Sunday, could you tell us where Jesus is? We want to see Jesus. Hallelujah. How many would say today, Pastor, that's me. I want to see Jesus. That you just slip your hand up. I want to see Jesus. I want to see Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Some of you maybe couldn't raise your hand. Maybe you don't have a relationship with God today. Maybe you're not walking with Him. Maybe you're still mocking Him or just along for the ride. I don't know. Maybe just come because your parents are going to be to church today. Oh, my prayer, friend, is that you would find the living Jesus. Not just some historical figure, but that you would find the Christ, the anointed one, the Son of the living God. And you'd have a relationship with him today. So how many would say, Pastor Ron, that's what I want? I want to see Jesus. If that's you, I just want you to lift your face up to heaven. Just look up to heaven right now. If you want to see Jesus, you're not in a relationship with him, you want to see him. something that's clouded that. Just look up to heaven right now. Yes, yes, many are looking up. Thank you. Look to heaven. I want to see Jesus. God, I want to see you. I want to know you. I want to experience you. I want to know who you really are in my life. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's all stand together, shall we? Praise you, God. Praise you, God. Let's pray this prayer. Will you pray after me? Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you in need of touching your heart with my worship, with my life. God, I want to see you. I want to see who you really are. Lord, I ask you to clear out a path. Anything that's in the way, any sin that's in my life, any misconception, clear it out, God, so that I might see Jesus. I want to know Jesus on this Palm Sunday. Forgive me, Lord. Change my life. I ask and I pray and I say with my mouth, you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. I believe in my heart that you are Jesus in my life. Amen, amen. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. 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 I know some of you prayed that prayer maybe for the first time of you renew your vows to Christ. I want to leave the altars open today. I'll stay, I'll pray with you. I'd love to pray with you. Amen. I know we have counselors who love to talk to you, give you some literature, begin a discipleship class with you. Amen. Tonight, don't forget, 6 o'clock, we're going to have a great service in the park. Hallelujah. Have a wonderful day. Enjoy Jesus. Enjoy Jesus this week. Hallelujah. It's the Super Bowl. Hallelujah. It's the real series of Christianity. Amen. Have a great week in Jesus. God bless you.